Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. At gayon din po yung mga kapwang mananampalataya na nakikibahagi sa pagsamba sa Panginoon sa araw ng linggo sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo sa pamamagitan nitong live stream. I would like to start with an insight of a uh, an article I read from the internet. Yung kanyang topic ay very uh, intriguing. Kaya na nagsimula ko o kaya binasa ko. It was written by a uh, uh, a woman uh, author Jan or Hunt with the title The Trouble with Rewards. The Trouble with Rewards. That's the title of the article. And uh, she shares here the use of reward to motivate, for example, children. Alam natin yan sa ating karanasan siguro, no? They have a jar filled with uh, small toys or other rewards to be given out when a child uh, completes certain specific tasks or changes his or her behavior at the parent's request. No? Pag eh, hindi ka iiyak, bibigyan kita ng ganito. No? The whole idea of reward. No? On the one hand, maganda, sabi nga niya, because rewards instead of punishment, which is of course uh, kinaayawan natin at ayaw nating masaktan o saktan yung mga anak. Halimbawa, to learn the important things, no, we use rewards to uh, for them to, to learn and it is more attractive, appealing. Pero, sabi niya, the downside of this is also true. And what is that? He said, that in the reward system, it is inherent the possibility of failure. Failure to obtain, for example, the reward, which is frustrating, and failure to please the parents or the authority figure, for example. So, inevitably, the possibility of failure brings fear of failure too. No? And according to this author, and I quote, she said, the biggest problem with rewards is the hidden message that if there were no rewards, the child would not perform the task in question. It can even be said that the fear of not being rewarded is a punishment. And she sees many possible effects. And I would like to point out some. He said, ano bang mga effect nito no, sa bata? For example, the, uh, with this reward system, they may not recognize, for example, or appreciate on their own what is important to learn in life. They are just functioning as if at the prompting only of reward without for them discovering what is truly essential no, apart from those rewards. No? that they learn only what others would reward them to do. Thus, they might begin to disregard their own personal preferences, for example, also, or what interests them. Kung ano lang yung nag sa kanila ng reward without their own personal preferences, for example. The message 
that the specific task given, no, being rewarded, no, must be to some extent also difficult and unpleasant. Otherwise, no, why has someone taken the trouble to set up this reward system? She said. After all, no one has ever had to offer reward to get a child eat an ice cream. No. So, the reflection is this, that extrinsic rewards no, take the child's attention only away from the intrinsic ones. She's describing what is called uh, the intrinsic rewards. No? Help, she said, a child to focus on intrinsic rewards, meaning the external rewards like whatever tokens, school grades, gifts, or deliberate or manipulative praise are arbitrary ones. That uh, this they bear no direct relationship with the matter at hand. This intrinsic reward that the author is saying is helping the child, the person, to learn the importance of keeping one's, for example, uh, a child uh, keeping one's room in order, clean, while focusing on the actual issue, for example, would mean helping the child appreciate the inherent rewards of having a clean and orderly room, like the easy, no, that it is easier to find things, no, or to avoid health problems like uh, allergies, avoiding uh, accidents or uh, in the uh, in a messy room no or just the good feeling of having an orderly environment the trouble with rewards she said uh, at times it can be it can appear beautiful but actually there are also negative effects on this. When I remember this uh, insight as I read the Gospel today, especially the second part of the Gospel, when Jesus said at the end, when you have done all you have been commanded to do, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. With this parable, Jesus wants to correct our natural or maybe cultural inclination to seek rewards. The underlying uh, logic here of many of our relationship it, is this as they say in Latin, do ut des. I give you so that you may give me. No? Do ut des. The logic of work, for example, is I do this so that I receive the salary, which is, of course, for us in our, in our uh, values it is. It should be. No? We think that, what, that we have the right to be compensated for the work and service we have done. And I think that is supposed to be the right thing that should happen. No? It is a normal way of relating, especially in the area of work. No? But Jesus is warning us not to put such system of relationship in the dynamics of our own relationship with God. That after doing this or that for Him, 
or for His church, for His kingdom, that we can demand God no? our own reward. Jesus is correcting historically probably of those feeling in, entitled during His time that they had the, uh, the right to be saved, to enjoy the kingdom because they are they belong to the people of God, for example. Jesus is wanting to us to realize here that ultimately salvation, grace, the kingdom are not earned but are gifts from God. And this is a difficult lesson and difficult thing to understand if all practically our own experience of life and relationship revolves around this dynamics of do ut des. No. And uh, the Lord is, is inviting us here Precisely to see how we uh, we see our relationship with Him. Yes, we are called to participate and do and share His Word, and maybe using the uh, the category of what the the author the intrinsic reward of being called is the very joy, the very privilege of participating in His work more than anything else. And this is, I think, the cha a challenge for all of us and check on ourselves of how we see our relationship with Him. I do this and do this, good. I promote this or that, well and good. God expects from us no? but ultimately we cannot demand our reward and we see it from the point of view of faith that ultimately because it is a gift of God to us may we come to appreciate the goodness of the Lord. And may we find joy in doing His will, His work, no. and grow beyond this attitude of, I give you this, Lord, so that you may give me this. Do ut des. That is a very commercial, infantile relationship with God. We are invited to go beyond, and that is the relationship of trust in God who knows what is best for us. And in sharing His mission, in sharing His word, may we find joy because that is in itself the reward. And uh, may the Lord the generous Lord. Help us appreciate His goodness, His generosity, because we do not need to demand from God our reward, because He gives to us these things as gifts. Amen.